So here would be the front door of the Alamo. Front entrance. Texas flag. And inside here, you can see how thick these walls are. Thick walls. Two loyal members of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, each in her own way responsible for preserving this historic site. This is the ruins of the habitations of the Friars and Indians, refractory kitchen and other regular offices in the second patio. There was a, uh, a gallery with weaving rooms and rooms for storing materials and utensils. The habitations of the Indians formed a large plaza and a square with the church and the covenant. Through the middle of the plaza ran an Asaquia uh, with Asaquia. Is that what the, I hope? I... I hope I pronounced that right. Asaquia with various trees on their on its banks, but. In case hostile Indians might, uh, in case hostile Indians might cut off the ditch, a well was dug inside the co uh, convent, from which the inhabitants could get their abundant supply of water, of agua. And right there, we got the little itty bitty inchworm. All throughout the area, the, the snow and the uh, heavy ice and um, cold that they experienced, what, what, uh, five degrees above zero here in, in San Antonio, killed off many of the um, palm trees and the tropical plants. Some have uh, managed to survive somehow. There's some green in there. There's some green up here in this one. Um, some have survived. The live oaks, of course, are pretty hardy. But uh, yeah, even even the cactuses are coming back. And um, this is a very yeah, unusual. look, look at that. Uh huh. I think it's this is a, an encampment uh, reenactment, I suppose, where they had the friars uh, here at the. Uh, at the Alamo, because I think after all, the only structure left standing was the, uh, was the church. Because the Mexicans didn't want to tear that down. Everything else came down. This is Juan Seguin. He's a statesman, scout courier and the mayor, a mayor of San Antonio. This is John William Smith of Colorado. He uh, is an Alamo courier also, a scout, and also a mayor of San Antonio and he's a, he was a senator. This is Susanna Dickinson, Alamo survivor, and uh, she was a businesswoman back in those times. And the famous Jim Bowie, frontiersman, entrepreneur, soldier, and Alamo defender. 
occupied at the Alamo. And there, this is David Crockett, known as Davy Crockett, frontiersman, American humorist, politician, and also an Alamo defender. Got big shoes. He says he got big shoes. Well-known politician and humorist in the early 19th century America. Right. This is William Barrett Travis, a lawyer, a soldier, and an Alamo defender. How many lawyers do you know that would go fight a battle and defend a fort? William Barrett Travis uh, accomplished much before his death at the Alamo in 1836. A native of South Carolina, Travis was raised in Alabama where he taught school, edited a newspaper, and passed the bar all before turning 21. He moved to Texas in 1831 to escape debt and a failing marriage. Travis quickly became no, uh, involved in opposition to what many saw as tyrannical laws passed by Mexican administrations fearful of unruly American colonists in Texas. In 1832, his behavior sparked a small revolution in the town of Anahuac. Anahuac. Despite his distrust of the Mexican government, Travis became a close associate of Stephen F. Austin and other significant colonists. Travis welcomed the split with Mexico when it came in 1835 during the siege of Bejar and uh, Texas. Uh, Captain Travis captured a Mexican supply train at the grass fight. Travis and a small company of men arrived at Bejar in February 1836 to reinforce the Alamo. Travis. Travis's definitive cry, victory or death, ensured that Texans remembered the Alamo. And this is known as Calvary Courtyard. Uh, established in 1974. And this is the Alamo. Four pound replica cannons. Mm. <laughs> now you're famous. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Sorry. They said, well, they never wait the entire train.